this is how our task executor model will look like so we will be understanding all the concepts related to the task executor the AGVs, dispatchers, AGV network properties and the control points hey guys welcome to the channel IF 4.0 this is Ajay welcome all today we will be looking details about task executors we have already seen fixed resources details in our previous videos along with the assignments completed in the upcoming videos on this channel we will be looking about the task executors so we'll start from AGV we will go via operators transporters elevators and so on the task executors basically is used to assist certain task so basically if we require any transportation done load and load done then we are going to use task executors task executors we are having a lot of options in flexim for the task executor objects we will be today looking about an agv as a task executor agv is automated guided vehicle this we already have in most of the plants it is used widely it is mostly used for material transfer so the AGV transfers the material from one station to another or from one location to another we are going to model a small model and we are going to understand the properties of the task executor AGV one by one so we'll let's begin so we will take source we'll create a queue and then we will create another queue so what we are going to do is we are going to transfer the material from the source via queue to this queue too so what we will do is we will rename this as plant 1 and we will rename this as plant 2 and this task executor we will rename it as AGV now there are two methods one you can directly connect it to a center connection port and it will run based on the shortest distance available this is known as the conventional method so first we will go with that method what we need to do is we need to transfer the material from plant 1 to plant 2 with the shortest distance available that is the straight path so I'll make a center connection for AGV so I have made a center connection for this plant 1 I will make it as use transport for AGV and the box is used as the source and arrival 2 so I will reset and run so you can see that the AGV will be transferring the box to the plant again when we have the part available on this queue the AGV will be coming back so I will make this model faster so after two minutes we are going to have another part coming in so see the AGV comes in a straight path delivers in a straight path this is what is the conventional and the simplest method you can use AGV for now we will look into some of the properties of the AGVs so we are having the statistics same as we have for a fixed resource we have template same as it for a status uh, fixed resource visuals we are going to have same as the fixed resource so we will label same so there are some unique properties for the task executors those we are going to cover today and for our rest of the videos of task executors for understanding the another properties you can look the videos of fixed resource we have explained it in detail at that area so the task executor properties these are the unique properties only available for the task executor so the first property is the capacity so you can enter here what should be your maximum count you need to have which can be transferred from one plant to another by an AGV so only one part will be transferred by AGV at a time we have another is load time we have another parameter known as unload time then we have break to so this is basically the property which should be used by an app task executor when brakes are applied so when the brakes are applied you can 
tell him to go to same items of the same or closer station same load station same label same destination pull from the task sequence or new task sequence only so this is break two properties it is not mostly used we are going to keep it as new task sequence only that means that whenever a break is applied then the EGB is going to pick up new task sequence if it is going to have uh, the task sequence available into his uh, task list he is going to destroy it and it is going to pull up a new task sequence it is not going to pick up existing task sequence once AGV comes back after a break we have another uh, checkbox here you can see fire on resource available at simulation start so basically this is the logic available for the task executors which states that whenever a resource is available it will be used for carrying out certain activities so when you check on this it is going to be used like the on resource available logic would be used at a simulation start so whenever you start that is simulation on the resource available logic will be applicable to it if you uncheck it it will be not applicable to it so this is the task executor properties then we have traveling properties here so maximum speed you can put here meters per minute you can see the units are present here you can change it as per your requirement if you want to rotate the AGV if you want to uh, the, like this is related to an animation if you want to show the rotation you check it if not uncheck it acceleration you can put deceleration you can put threshold we have basically this is the rotation threshold you can put that thing there then we have navigators now currently we are having a default navigator when you were when we will be using the a star navigation or we will be using agv uh, the this drop down will be increased now we are having another drop downs here so you can see do not travel offset for load unload travel offset for load unload do not travel offset and block space on networks and use navigator for offset travel so basically these are all the strategies we can use for task executor first is that it will not travel offset so it will go only on the paths if we want to sh show that it should go away from the path and unload then travel offset needs to be selected this is selected by default into the flex sim do not travel offset means this will uh, the AGV will not leave the path also it will block the space on the network R otherwise what will happen is another AGV come and start unloading at the same point but if it is going to block it on the network the space has been blocked the previous forklift or AGV cannot unload and another is use navigator for offset travel so the offset travel can be done by but by using the paths specified so we have default navigator here so we will check out that once we are creating a path here because in the conventional method these things are not applicable so then we have the dispatcher so the dispatchers mostly we use for connecting multiple task executors at a time so the properties of it are shown here so first available basis can be round robin shortest so basically this dispatcher property is to tell which AGV if we are having more than one AGV for doing certain task then how the task would be passed on so it might be passed on first available AGV shortest AGV distance shortest Q AGV random AGV or round robin AGV then we have Q strategies basically this Q is related to the task sequence Q so you can put the which type of task sequence it needs to follow that prioritize by the distance this is to assign the task to the AGV by dispatcher basically so no queue strategy it will be first in first out and sort by task sequence property priority so we are going to keep the default settings as of we are not going to change it and then we have the ports same which we have in the fixed resource also we have triggers here so the triggers will be different than the fixed resource different in the sense it will have some additional features like on load on learn unload on start task on finish task so these will be some of the additional triggers you will be having for task executors apart from the fixed resource so we will see them soon so I'll reset and run the model and show you the, the conventional method how it 
runs so this is how it directly goes inside the queue and unload it so this is what is known as offset travel now I'll make this as 0 0.5 we will be running it now so we have made arrival faster so the AGV will be moving in the faster phase when I show connection is removed you can see uh, this is changed so for the task executor here you can use trucks also so whatever if you want the default library gives you aeroplane ship train trucks so basically these features of task executor which you see here aeroplane ship train and trucks these are going to be used for GIS module this is here GIS module so that is basically used for logistics we'll see that in the upcoming videos uh, but we will go with the AGB as of so you we saw how this conventionally works basically now what we will be doing is we will be creating an AGB path so you can see this is an AGB path this is another path so I'm just clicking the mouse then just dragging the mouse then putting another left click then again I'm clicking left click and then I am again clicking left click so this way we are going to create a AGV network that is path now you can see we have created trade path but the joints are not connected so for connecting the joints we you can drag or move the position of this paths just by clicking it on it and moving it by the mouse then we have join path uh, option here in AGV you can see so when you click on it click on the path and another path which you need to join so here you need to take a note on that if you need if you are the these are the directions of the path so you can see it is going from bottom to top it is going from left to right so you need to understand that the path is created in the same direction it should not be opposite so whenever you are going to connect the path so I need to connect this top path to the this vertical path then I'm going to click on this join path and then I'm going to click on this top path and then I will be clicking on this bottom path so that the connection will be made from top to bottom and you can see this curvature is formed from top to bottom so you need to take care of this when you are joining the paths because you, if you are going to click this bottom first and then the top you can see the connection is made alternate it's, it's wrong this will stop the AGV and your model will be not running so you need to delete that and again you need to click on this and on the bottom path to join it and then you can move here you can click on this path and then this path and we have established a successful loop of an AGV then we are going to take the control points and we are going to place those control points on the path now basically what are control points now the control point is a point for a AGV network where you can put control triggers so basically those are points where you can apply uh, the triggers you can apply the rules you can apply conditions so as to decide how the AGVs should run so this is the control point and I am going to make a center connection I am going to make a, a connection for this from the queue to the control point then from the control point to the queue so now what will it do is the part from the queue will be assigned to this control point and the AGV will be lifting the part from this control point and will unload from this control point to this plan 2 now we will be able to look into the properties of travel offset and all these things we'll just check this then we are going to make so I'll show can make the show connection so as to understand and I'll remove this center connection which I made by mistake and now I will I also need to assign this AGV to the AGV path 
because we have just created AGV but it is not assigned to any path so what we are going to do is we are going to make a connection from the AGV to the control point then we are going to click on travel AGV because it is a AGV travel location if you are going to put a location it will be just sitting there so I will put AGV travel I will reset this and I will run this and you can see the AGV is running in a loop so it will be running in an AGV loop so we have created a AGV path for AGV to go from one plant to another plant and load and unload via control points